Paramahamsa Parvajakacharya Astatara Sata Sri Sri Madhis Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai Anantakoti Vaishnavrinda Ki Jai Iskan Founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Brantarad Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Gaur Premananda Samaveda Bhaktivinda Ki Jai All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Sri Guru and Garanga. Glories to Sri La Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 7, Further Inquiries by Vidura, Text 7. Etasmen, me, mano, vidvan, kidyate, Jnana Shankate Tana Paranuda Vibho Kashmalam Manasam Mahal Etasmin Mano, mano Vidvan Kidyate Jnana Shankate Tanna Paranuda Vibho Kashmala Manasam Mahat Etasmin Me Mano Vidvan Kidyate Jnana Sankate Tanna Paranuda Vibho Kashmala Manasam Mahat Etas mean me mano vidvan. Kid ye te gyana shankate. Tanna paranu da vibo. Kashmala manasam mahat. Kasmalam Manasam Mahad. Sme me mano vidvan. Kite gana sankate. Tana parana da vido. Kasmalam Manasam Mahad. Etas me mano vidvan. Kite gana sankite. Manasamahat. Etas min mamano vidvan. Kite gana sankite. Tana Parno do Vibo Kashmala Manasam Mahat Etas mean me mano vidvan Kidyate Gana Sankite Kashmala Vido Kashmala Manasam Mahat Vaishnavis Etas min me mano vidvan Kidyate ganasankate 
Tana Paranada Vibo Kashmala Manasam Mahat Minimino Vidvan Kidyate Ganasankate Tana Paranado Vibo Kashmala Manasam Mahat Etasmin in this may my manaha mind vidvan o learned one kidyate is troubling agana nescience sankate in distress tat Therefore, Naha, my Paranuda, clear up. Vibo, O Great One, Kashmalam, illusion. Manasam, relating to the mind. Mahat, great. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. O great and learned one, my mind is greatly illusioned by the distress of this nescience, and I therefore request you to clear it up. Purport. Such bewilderment as represented here by Vidura takes place for some living entities, but not for everyone. For if everyone were bewildered, there would be no possibility of a solution by higher personalities. Om Jnana Timurandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So today I'm going to speak on this verse and then also offer a report on a presentation I made at the World Archaeological Congress in Prague in the Czech Republic. Um, <clears throat> a question has been raised here uh, by Vidura about why, if the super soul is present, with each living entity, with the soul and the body of each living entity, how could it possibly be that such souls could be put into danger? And the example that Srila Prabhupada gave in, uh, gave in one of the previous purports was that, you know, you could understand it if you know, people were just on their own in a city that some robbers or criminals might attack them. But if the policeman is there, how, as super soul, if the Supreme Personality of Godhead is there as super soul, then how are these things happening? It, it appears to him to be a contradiction. Uh, of course, we're going to learn that the, the solution is, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, ye yatamam pratyate tamstataiva bhajamiham, as they surrender to me, I reward them accordingly. So Krishna is somewhat neutral in the matter, but if someone turns to him, uh, as a servant, an eternal servant, then, of course, uh, 
Krishna is always watching over such a person and making sure nothing happens to them. And actually, that's the position he wants everyone to be in. Jivara Sarupahoy Krishna Nityadas. Everyone is by constitution an eternal servant of Krishna and meant to be engaged in his Nitya Leela in the spiritual world, either on some Vaikuntha planet or in Goloka Vrindavan. But uh, some souls are not presently qualified to be in that position because they aren't acting as eternal servants of Krishna. They're not acting according to their constitutional position. So for them, Krishna gives permission. He allows them to act out their desires to enjoy independently from him. Uh, and they have to experience the results of that decision to enjoy independently. They can't use the spiritual energy of the spiritual world for that purpose. So Krishna gives them a perverted reflection of that spiritual uh, energy. He gives them the material energy to interact with. And as super soul, he's upadrasta anumantas cha. He supervises and gives permission, but he doesn't take responsibility, he says in the Bhagavad Gita, for the actions of the conditioned souls. They, he's like a a judge who, if the, somebody violates the law, he dispenses the lawful uh, reaction. If somebody is following, he gives the lawful reaction. But the judge is not that he's anybody's enemy or anybody's friend. The judge is just giving the proper reaction. So, <clears throat> so ultimately, that's the answer to the question. But really, uh, a, a pandita samadarshinaha, the pandit will see all living entities equally in their happiness and distress. Because on the spiritual level of reality, even the conditioned soul who is acting under the influence of the material energy is ultimately part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You know, ju they just by misusing their free will, they have put themselves into an awkward position, which Krishna is always trying to rectify. He's always giving them the opportunity to turn back to him. So, and some of them do. And those who do turn to Krishna, they become, uh, they can become instruments of Krishna in helping bring the other conditioned souls back to their proper state of consciousness. And that's by the grace of Srila Prabhupada and the grace of Krishna, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Jagannath, we are in that position of being able to help others come to the proper solution of the difficulties in which they find themselves. But all of this depends upon having a proper understanding of who we are. Ultimately, we're not these material bodies, dehinos minyata dehe. We are the spirit soul within the body. It depends on us understanding not only who we really are, spirit soul, aham brahmasmi, 
as the Vedanta Sutra says, uh, we should also understand where we are. We're in the material world, which is a place of misery. Janma mrityu jaravyati dukkha dosh anudarshanam. An intelligent person will see this is a place of uh, birth, death, old age, and disease, jara. Think this past year is the year that I finally understood that I'm getting old. <laughs> you know, it, otherwise I feel like I'm 16, I'm 20, I'm, but I, I'm realizing, I'm beginning to realize that uh, this body is aging. So it's, uh, it's a big realization. You have to learn to accept help from people. Like during the Abhi Shake ceremony the other day, I was in line and it was my turn. I was brought up to the front of the line from the back. Somebody noticed me there. And it was my turn to go up the stairs to bathe, uh, you know, to offer some Abhi Shake to uh, Lord Jagannath, Baladev, and Subhadra. But you know, as I was walking up the stairs, somebody grabbed my arm. The Pajari grabbed my arm. Yeah, what, what, I'm just helping you up the steps. Or when I was in Europe, I part of my travels were done by train. Yeah, you know, I was getting on the train with my suitcase. Yeah, I, I can do it. Somebody you know, grabbed my hand, grabbed the suitcase. I thought, is this somebody trying to steal my suitcase? You know, it's just some guy trying to help me, you know. You, know, you hear these stories sometimes, oh, thieves, they'll take things from you, or uh, maybe it was somebody who, uh, I mean, sometimes you find people on trains that, say, oh, I'm going to help you, and then they ask for some donation or something, you know. So I thought, yeah, bakshish, or else I'll punch you out or something. So uh, I'm gradually accepting, yes, this is a, after saying it for so many years in Bhagavatam class, I'm coming to accept, yes, there is suffering in this material world and old age is one of them. So <clears throat> confer some privileges in some countries. If you're over 70, you can ride free on their transportation, public transportation. But uh, <clears throat> uh, So yes, we should understand where we are. We're not in the place where we can fully express our spiritual nature of being Satchit Ananda, full of eternity, knowledge, and bliss. And that leads me in, in well, yeah, we should know where we are. We're in the material world, and we should understand we belong in the spiritual world, and we should try to achieve that destination. And that's uh, the message and the purpose of Srila Prabhupada's Temple of Vedic Planetarium. And uh, for... A good many years now, I've been making presentations at international conferences of archaeology and other disciplines like history of science and philosophy of science. And mostly I've been talking about the subject matter of the book, Forbidden Archaeology, you know, Archaeological Evidence for Extreme Human Antiquity. But sometimes I take the opportunity of offering archaeologists some more directly spiritual uh, knowledge. And 
I'm going to go to that part of the, my presentation today. If I can find it. So one thing archaeologists are interested in today is what they call heritage. You know, every country has its national heritage. You know, Egypt has the pyramids. India has the Taj Mahal. Um, Greece has the Parthenon and the Acropolis. So, oh, some adjustment. Thank you. So because archaeologists are concerned with heritage, I thought that might be a good angle for introducing them to this project. So that's uh, the title there, Preserving Vedic Cosmology, Temple of the Vedic Planetarium as Heritage Project. You know, that was my presentation to them and they saw this slide of course i today i'm using my initiated name but usually i use my western name with the archaeologist so what archaeologists do is they take discoveries from the past we normally think of archaeology as about all about the past. But they're working in the present, so what they do is they take this material from the past and they display it to people as their heritage, their ancestry. And more recently, they're coming to think not only about the present, but the future. What are they going to pass on to future generations. So I, I, heritage can exist in two forms. One is tangible heritage, like stone monuments and things like that. But there's also intangible heritage, by which they mean ideas, like ideas about cosmology, for example. Uh, the United Nations has passed uh, a convention or treaty on preserving intangible cultural heritage. And among the different things they list as part of this, what they call intangible heritage, is cosmology, ideas about the origin of life and the universe. So what I decided to do was trans to express the Temple of Vedic Planetarium as a project involved in transmitting our traditions, intangible cultural heritage, to the future. And these are all slides and information that I presented to this gathering of archaeologists that takes place every four years in a different city. This, this year was held in Prague in the Czech Republic, which is the ancestral home of our temple president. <laughs> you informed me of that <laughs> the other day. So... <clears throat> Um, the tradition that we're representing is Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And in that tradition, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu plays a very important role. He appeared in 1486 in Mayapur in West Bengal. And I informed them a, a, a central text for him, very important, 
was Srimad Bhagavatam, and he recommended the study of this particular literature. And a big part of that literature is cosmology, uh, our place in the universe and what's beyond the universe. So <clears throat> this um, Srimad Bhagavatam itself is a kind of future-oriented heritage discourse. About 5,000 years ago, sages gathered in Naimasharanya forest. It was the very beginning of the Kali Yuga. And they were thinking, this Kali Yuga is going to be very bad. You know, people's lives are going to be very short. They're going to be very unfortunate. There are going to be all kinds of disturbances. Uh, so what can we give them from our vast Vedic cultural heritage? What are the most essential points that we can communicate to them for their benefit? in this coming age of Kali. So, you know, they were thinking, okay, we've got from the past this vast resource which has helped us in the present, their present. What are the essential elements of it that we should communicate to the future generations, ourselves, really? And their answer is the Srimad Bhagavatam. That contains the essential truths we need to know in this ongoing age of Kali. So an essential element of that cosmology is that the material cosmos is only a small part of the total reality most of which is occupied by the spiritual world, the spiritual planets, the highest of which is Goloka Vrindavan. So in that material cosmos, there's birth, death, old age, and disease. In the spiritual world, there is none of that. There's eternity, knowledge, and bliss. So within the material world, there's creation and destruction. Universes are being created and destroyed in vast cycles of time. Now this cosmology was for many centuries the property strictly of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas in the Indian subcontinent, mostly, West, mostly Bengal, and Orissa. But in, 19, in the 1960s, Srila Prabhupada globalized, internationalized this cosmology. And part of his plan for introducing this cosmology to the world outside India was his temple of Vedic planetarium. He wrote in 1976, quote, now here in India, we are planning construction of a very large Vedic planetarium or temple of understanding. Within the planetarium, we will construct a huge detailed model of the universe as described in the text of the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Within the planetarium, the model will be studied by onlookers from different levels by use of escalators. Detailed information will be given on open verandas on the different levels by means of dioramas, charts, films, etc. So <clears throat> decades later, the physical structure 
of the Temple of Vedic Planetarium is there. And this is a photograph, it's not an artist's conception, although it is very beautiful. And, and the west wing of that Temple of Vedic Planetarium in the red circle there is going to be devoted to a museum and planetarium theater explaining the model, the chandelier model of the Vedic planetary, planetary systems that hangs in the, that will hang in the main temple dome. So uh, somehow or other I've been engaged in uh, conceptualizing exhibits for this uh, west wing of the Temple of the Vedic Planetarium that will house these exhibits, which are meant to show people how the Vedic cosmology provides answers to these fundamental questions. Who am I? Where am I? And where should I be going? Of course, there's more that can be said about this, but uh, you know, I just wanted to give a brief report on it that uh, you know, I'm always looking for ways in which to introduce things to the part of the scientific community that I mostly deal with, you know, the archaeologist and the anthropologist and I, I think that yeah of course everything starts out very small this is just some initial attempt to introduce this project to the uh, scientific world and you know I think this is a, a good way to do it as a, an example of preserving for future generations, the cosmology of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna. Uh, well, the first thing they accepted was the proposal to present the paper. Uh, what you have to do is submit. They, they put out a call for papers among their members. I'm a member, so I received the call for papers. And they asked for a 300-word, you know, your title and a 300-word explanation of what you're going to do. And they don't always accept. You know, they have an academic committee that reviews the proposal. And... Somehow or other, over the years, I've had pretty good luck of getting, or Christian, by Krishna's grace rather than luck, uh, my proposals get accepted. Not all of them. Some of them get rejected, and it's always hard to be rejected. You know, Krishna, I'm trying to make this offering to you, and you're rejecting it? Well, I, we don't want you to get too puffed up. And, you know, you have to understand it's by my mercy that you're able to do anything. So sometimes to convince me of that, Krishna, uh, I'm not going to say anything more about it. But uh, <clears throat> uh, so that's a success right there because it gets printed, your abstract gets printed, and basically... The abstract says what I said here. And, you know, so that's a success. And then uh, the first question I got after the presentation was, when is it going to be finished? <laughs> Which is a question probably many of you are also asking. But uh, by Krishna's grace, we hope to have something ready for the opening in 2024. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Anything else? Yeah.
Okay. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai.